Well, pitch and desk systems were one of the big advancements in disc cutting in the late 1950s. The first machines that came out with it was the AM32B, and that was a tube controlled uh, system that uh, spaced the grooves farther apart or closer together, depending on how intense the program material is. The idea being that when the program material is more quiet, the grooves are spaced very close together, saving some space because the initial idea, I believe, was to be able to get a full movement of a symphony about 20 minutes onto a side of a LP, a 12 inch LP. So they came up with this, they implemented it in the late 1950s with um, tube technology. And then moving into the 60s, they developed a system that was based around uh, all on cards. And the cards have an input section, they have what's called um, sample and hold. Um, and then they, uh, and then the platter itself has um, some segments on it so every quarter of a revolution it samples new uh, voltages and it releases the last one in the um in the chain so what that does is it calculates how far the groove should be spaced uh together or apart so they don't run into each other and cause skips so uh, a few of the crucial aspects of a pitch and depth system are your depth and depth is indicated with this meter here, you set the, the meter to 30 milliamps when you're cutting, and that usually yields, if you calibrate your machine right, that yields a groove that's two mils or two thousandths of an inch wide. Um, that calibration can be changed here uh, for the setting of the, of the depth. And then your suspension box up here is calibrated using a three different, um, well, two different knobs here. You got the top knob here. This is a very coarse adjustment that raises your suspension box up and down. And then you have one back here, which is attached to a spring that's uh, kind of a more fine adjustment than this one. And then your final adjustment comes when you're trying to get to that two mil groove. You want this set at 30 milliamps. And then you can make slight tweaks to your pitch or to your depth uh, before or after a cut if you have something that's particularly, um, you know, maybe you think won't track as well. Maybe you start with just a little bit wider uh, base pitch. Um, the other uh, essential element of the pitch and depth system is the pitch box itself. Now, this box has several motors in it, and what those motors do is they're connected uh, via a, almost like a little transmission system inside the box, and it's connected from this shaft to this flywheel, which is directly attached to what we call the lead screw. And the lead screw is what the lathe locks into to drive this carriage and the cutter head across the disc as we cut the record. Now the pitch box receives signal from, electrical signal from these cards and we set what's called a base pitch. And what we're looking at right now, this would be a base pitch of 300 lines per inch and that's indicated by LPI, lines per inch, and you can see three, three times 100 equals 300. So there's different ways to set your base pitch when you uh, cut a record. The longer the record is, usually the more you have to pack the grooves closer together. So we have the ability to go uh, much higher, um, you know, up to uh, 600 lines per inch. The tightest we usually cut is somewhere in the 400 lines per inch range. Um, I'm gonna set this to 300 just so we can see the action of the machine as it as it works uh, these motors are controlled by tachometers and the uh, like i said the electrical signals that come from the cards down here a couple other interesting things on the lathe shows you what size it is uh, it should show us the speed here but this light bulb must be uh, currently not functioning at 33 rpm um, this called the echo button if you've ever heard a record that has a slight you hear a little bit of music before the music actually start that's called pre-echo and this button uh, spaces the grooves out a little bit if you choose in between songs to help avoid for that these buttons here are pretty self-explanatory start starts the pitch box spiral engages the uh, what we call the fast motor so you can put the, the markers in that uh, designate uh, the what we call track breaks. Uh, time is an automatic spiral that's set for a particular time period. And that period is set here, down here. You can see this machine, you can go a quarter of a second, half a second, seven tenths of a second, all the way up to two seconds of spiral time to make your track bands. This knob is, sets the, uh, the what we call the base pitch, currently at 300 LPI. And this little control here is interesting. It actually controls how much the echo button changes the um, 
the spacing on the grooves when it's uh, pressed down. So if you want to space your grooves wider when you press the echo button, you can do that. If you want to space them closer together, you can do that also. So. So to see this in action, we're gonna look at two different things. We're gonna look at the, the, the pitch, which is how far the grooves are spaced apart from each other. And we're gonna look at the depth. And a, and a couple things affect the depth of a cut. Uh, the phase coherence of the, of the record can cause a groove to get narrower or wider uh, because of the way that the, um, the audio needs to be cut onto the disc. And also there's a thing called a lateral excursion for vertical, the deeper, the groove gets, the more you have to space the next groove away from it so you don't slice off the side of the groove that was just laid down. So as the groove gets wider, you also need to space the grooves out a little bit farther so you don't ding the one that you, you previously cut. So what we have up here is we have this uh, soundtrack from a movie. You can see it's very quiet in spots and then it's very dynamic in other spots. So what we've done is we've set the machine up to its base settings. 30 milliamps here for a two mil groove. And then we pick, just picked an arbitrary number of 300 lines per inch. Now, when I start the audio, which I've done, you can see that the quiet audio really doesn't affect this meter too much, but you can see as the audio approaches the, uh, a higher dynamic that the grooves start spacing themselves out farther, meaning the less lines per inch there are, the, wide, the, the, the farther the grooves are spaced apart from each other. Now, a secondary consideration would be the depth of the, of the cut. And you can watch this here as the dynamic parts come. Soundtracks are notoriously um, have uh, out of phase information because a lot of times they're uh, recorded in stereo and you can see the depth of the cut getting deeper as those dynamic parts hit. All right, now here's the real fun part. This is a little bit behind the scenes on the lathe and how you service the lathe. Uh, as you look at the pitch box in uh, before in the video, you see that it's a very self-contained unit. So there's a great question. Well, how do you how do you work on it? How do you calibrate it? Well, Neumann came up with this idea uh, a long time ago, where the box itself, the cover of the box, uh, has a connector on it that when you put the box on, all the connectors make contact with each other. Well, if you need to do service on on the pitch box, they make this connector cable where you can plug into the base and you can plug into the hood. And I can actually, you know, I can actually run the machine from the box hood being off. And that allows me to uh, check like the belts. It allows me to tighten the motor mounts if I have to. It allows me to do a lot of service work without having to um, you know, work from behind the machine through the small opening that's in the back of the hood. Um, you can see this, um, that there's two motors here. There's this motor, this motor does a lot of the day-to-day -day heavy lifting this is the motor that uh, drives the uh, carriage across the lead screw and then this motor that sits 90 degrees to that one is called the fast motor and that does things like when i put a spiral in you know you can see this motor kick in and both of those motors then are fed into this uh, little transmission box that allows them both to run at the same time and then when the fast motor kicks in that is uh, applied to the output you can see you can see the whole box and the whole drive shaft uh, speed up. And then when I shut it down, you can see that they all shut down. So it's fun. It's a little bit of insight into how we work on these machines, how we keep them running every day. And we hope you enjoyed a little bit of uh, behind the scenes of a VMS 70 mastering lathe.